Hello again, this is Martin of Project Sam and you are watching the in-depth video for Symphobia for Pandora Core, the smaller sibling of the full version of Pandora that we released in 2019. In this video, I'm going to take you through Pandora Core, but first, what is the Pandora series? Pandora is part of Project Sam's Symphobia series. With this series, we have always focused on two main things. Lush, playable ensemble recordings in all sorts of orchestral arrangements and orchestral effects covering things that are difficult to program using individual samples. Symphobia 1 covered the bases and Symphobia 2 expanded on this. With Symphobia 3, Lumina, we explored the lighter, more fantastical side of the orchestra. Last year, with Symphobia 4 Pandora, we wanted to go back to the foundation of the series. The thing that many of us have come to rely on on a daily basis. Time-saving ensembles and effects. This also meant new technology, which developed into adaptive sync. Sound-wise, Pandora explores the darker side of film music, focusing on the lower range of the orchestra and bigger sections. Pandora is great for adding additional power to existing tracks. It's really one of those cases where after you hear the difference, you don't really want to go back anymore. Uh, for me, it has also become my go-to library for building fast-paced action cues. And because of its darker sound, Pandora is also really well suited for genres like horror, thriller and sci-fi. Before we dive into Pandora Core, let's first take a look at the differences between Pandora Core and its bigger brother, Pandora. First and foremost, presets. I have both library browsers alongside here and I'll open the same instrument for the left and right to give you an idea. The full version of Pandora offers 143 single instruments and that compares to 48 instruments in Pandora Core. Generally speaking, you do get the same orchestral sections in both versions, but the full version of Pandora has a larger selection of articulations per section. For example, the low strings in Pandora Core offer crescendo, diminuendo and staccato articulations and the low strings in the full version also give you colenio, sforzando, swells, pizzicato and glissando articulations. The second main difference is microphone positions. The full version of Pandora offers four individual mic channels that you can mix in real time as well as a pre-rendered mix mic. Pandora Core offers the mix mic only. That means you'll have a great cinematic sound, but you're not able to create your own mic mix within an instrument. These two differences make the full version of Pandora a 140 gigabyte library compared to 18 gigabyte for Pandora Core. That's in uncompressed format. Now what's exciting is that functionality wise, Pandora Core offers everything that the full version does, including adaptive sync. So all crescendos, rolls and rises in Pandora Core, you can synchronize perfectly with your track. And this is also why you get the crescendo articulations for all the sections in the library. Sound design mode is also fully available for turning the orchestral instruments upside down and achieving a nice hybrid sound. All right, enough about the differences. Let's dive into Pandora Core. First up, preset previews. This is the Pandora Core browser with the seven main instrument folders. There's combos, effects, clusters, tonal, pulses, rises and percussion. I'd like to start by playing a few presets for you from each of these folders, starting with combos. Combos are similar to Contact's multis. They're instrument combinations layered together in various inspiring ways. Because combos have been designed as single instruments, there's a bunch of tricks we could do that are not possible with normal multis. Let me load the cluster crescendo. Sounds like this. This is a combination of a percussion roll, a cluster crescendo and a cluster hit. And the roll and the crescendo use the adaptive sync feature. More on that later. The hit is automatically placed at the end of the crescendo. Let's load another one. Intrafire. We 
we can easily change the length of the end node here. And this slider here, you will find all over Pandora Core. And it allows you to change the length of any crescendo in beats. Like this. And this again is adaptive sync at work, which I'll go into in great detail in the next section. Let's move on to the next instrument folder, Effects. I'll pick the top one, Horns and Trombones Suspense Bends. These are brass players bending down their note by a half. It's a nice haunting effect. In the right region, here, only half the section is doing this. So they end on two dissonant notes instead. This effect is actually an elaborated version of a similar brass effect in the original Symphobia. And what's funny is that it always reminds me of this pivotal moment in Game of Thrones where it was used. That made me smile. Again, we can change the length of the performance using the slider. It now used a different sample. Let's check out another effect instrument, scary repetitions for strings. The left blue region holds crescendos. The middle yellow region, crescendo diminuendos. And on the right here, very short versions. And again, using the slider, we can change the length of the effect. This effect reminds me of the soundtrack for Signs a bit. It's nice. Time to move on to the next instrument folder, Clusters. The clusters are related to the effects in the sense that they too are performances of multiple notes together. The uh, difference is that there is some more structure to the clusters. They're less ad-lib than the effects, and that's why they have their own folder. Let's load the Tutti Orchestra cluster crescendo. The Tutti Orchestra in Pandora Core has the full orchestra performing together for a really powerful out-of-the-box sound. What's cool is that the percussion layers were recorded separately and over here you have control over these layers. So for example I can turn off the timpani layer. Or turn down the bass drum. Or just have the timpani. Let's load the short versions of the Tutti Orchestra clusters. Again, you have the optional percussion layers over here. And here you can switch between three different lengths of the short clusters. Let's load one more from the clusters folder, the low woodwinds diminuendo cluster. Again, there's multiple lengths available. Has a bit of an alien vibe to it to me. Let's move on to the tonal articulations. When it comes to presets, this is the largest folder in the library. With tonal, we mean that the samples are single note performances, in unison or in octaves. Let's load up the low brass ensemble crescendos. 
The low brass ensemble in Pandora Core features all the lower brass instruments recorded together. That's three tenor trombones, three bass trombones, and two tubas. So that's a pretty big section. Again, we have the length slider here. And the region on the right here in yellow holds some extra soft sustains. These work great to delay the crescendo by starting the sustain first and the crescendo in blue a little later. Let's also take a look at the short versions of the same brass ensemble. This ensemble was recorded in unison, but I actually like playing it in octaves. And an easy way to do that is to simply enable the quick octave here. Over here we have some different staccato lengths. Nice. Let's check out a different section, the Harp Ensemble Glissandos. This is two harps playing together. We have minor scale on the left and major scale on the right. And on louder velocity we have downward scale. Now I dare to say recorded harp glissandos are notoriously inflexible samples. So for this instrument it's especially nice to have the adaptive sync controls over here to set the length. And it works great. Again, more on this feature later. Let's go to the string section. The low strings short. Like the brass ensemble, this is a nice large section of 10 cellos and 6 basses. Performed in unison. And again, there's three different staccato lengths. This is definitely one of my favorite bread and butter instruments in the library. Let's move on. Here's the Tutti Orchestra once again, but this time it's not a cluster, but a playable instrument. Let's check out the shorts. And again, I can have some control over the percussion layers here. This was with percussion, but I can turn them both off if I want, or just have the timpani on. All right, let's check out one more preset from the tonal folder. I'll go for the low woodwinds crescendo. Again, the length can be set over here. And as before, in yellow, we have the extra soft sustains. Cool. Let's go to the next instrument folder. Pulses. Pulses are recorded rhythmical patterns for strings and brass that sync to your host BPM. As you can see, there are four cluster pulses and there's one tonal pulse. I'll start with the last one. It's for strings and it combines the low and mid strings in one instrument. We have basses and cellos on the left. Violas and violins over here. And on the right side of the keyboard we have single staccatos to use with the pulses. I've prepared a little sequence for you to show what these pulses can do. Here we go. Here 
You're now listening to the eighth note performances of the pulses. There's also quarter notes and sixteenths available. If I switch between these using the same sequence, we get something like this. Last but not least, you have an optional synth layer available here for the low range of the strings, for the basses and the cellos, to get more of a modern hybrid sound. There's also an optional pulsate feature. It sounds like this. Okay, let's check out the other pulses. The cluster pulses. Horns and trombones. Each note in the blue and yellow regions now holds a different cluster. With cluster repetitions on the left, and matching cluster single staccatos on the right. And these work great to add accents to the cluster repetitions on the left. And this same set of clusters is available for trumpets, both open and muted, and the strings. Let's go to the next instrument folder, which is Rises. These are iconic string rises, and I'll load up the first one, Arco, as an example. The four regions hold four different dynamic shapes, from soft to loud, and each key within a region has a different riser, from low to high. Again, the length of the riser can be set here. And if needed, it can also be set in seconds instead. One more cool thing I want to show you is the stutter effect right here. This effect is actually available for all the instruments if you go into the expanded effects here. More on that later. But for the string rises, the stutter effect is so iconic that it's featured on the main page. And you'll know it when you hear it. For all you trailer composers out there. Let's go to the last, but not least, instrument folder, Percussion. Pandora Core packs some powerful percussion samples. Cinematic drums, which is a bigger percussion ensemble playing together. Suspended cymbals, Gran Casa, Tum Tum, an awesome timpani set, Tom Toms, and a variety of layered percussion combinations. And as you can see, there's single hits and crescendo rolls available for all of these. Let's check out the cinematic drums. We've got single hits mapped to velocity on the left yellow keys. And dynamics spread out from left to right over here. The blue keys hold the crescendo rolls. And of course we can set the length of the roll again using the adaptive sync slider. Let's take a look at the symbols. Mapping is similar with the single hits in yellow. And rolls in blue. There's a nice range of lengths in here from very short to very long.
Let's load the timpani. Three regions here. Again, the single hits in yellow with long hits in the middle and dampened hits on the right and the rolls in blue. Last one, the tutti percussion, all drums, only hits. This one lays the gran cassa, toms and timpani together. On the left we have the normal hits only. And on the right, rim shots are added. Very nice. And that's it for the preset previews. It's time to dive into the features of Pandora Core. One of the best features in Pandora Core is Adaptive Sync. You have already seen me change the beat slider for a crescendo or a roll numerous times. Now let's take a closer look at how this works and what the possibilities are. Let's load up the cinematic drums again as an example. Now these rolls are controlled by what we call Adaptive Sync. So what is that? For Pandora Core, we recorded all crescendos, rolls and rises in numerous lengths. In this particular case, for the cinematic drums, there's eight different lengths available. These are eight unique recordings. As soon as I press a note, Adaptive Sync automatically picks the best matching recorded length for me and, if needed, tweaks it so that the climax of the crescendo sample aligns perfectly with the tempo of my track. And this is a huge time saver. Before, with pre-recorded rolls like this, I would have to move around the start of a note manually, play back, check it, until the ending would finally align with the music. Pre-recorded rolls sound great, but they used to be relatively inflexible. And with Adaptive Sync, it was our goal to eliminate this problem. So what does this sound like? Over here, we have a number of controls for Adaptive Sync. And Contact is loaded into my sequencer, Logic. So Pandora Core is getting the tempo that is set in Logic here. And this means that if I now play one of the blue keys, I get a cinematic drum roll that is exactly 4 beats long in 120 BPM. So using the beat slider, the number of beats is fixed, but the actual length you hear is not, because it depends on the tempo. Let me turn on the metronome in Logic and play another 2 beat roll for you. That was in 120 BPM. If I now change the tempo in Logic to say 90 BPM and don't change any of the adaptive sync controls, the length of the roll is changed automatically. Very cool. However, my favorite way to use adaptive sync is in downbeat mode. In this mode, the climax of a crescendo, roll or riser is automatically synchronized with, you guessed it, the downbeat, that's the first beat of the next bar. Downbeat mode basically sets the length in beats for you. And that depends on when you trigger a note, how far it is from the downbeat. The only requirement is that your host is either playing back or recording. If it's not, you'll hear a preview. Now, let me put the sequencer on record and play a number of notes with different starting points. So as you could hear, it did not matter when I started my notes, they just resulted in different rolls. And each of the rolls ended exactly on the next downbeat. Super useful. I'd like to show you just how flexible this feature is once you actually have some notes recorded. I'll minimize Pandora Core here so that we see a bit more of my sequencer. And I'll record two new notes. Here we go.
As you can see, I start at this note here on the first beat, which means it automatically becomes a four beat roll to the next downbeat here on bar three. The other note I started on the fourth beat, making it a one beat roll to the downbeat here on bar four. If I now move the start of the first note to say here, you will see that both rolls still synchronize to the same downbeats perfectly. Very nice. So what if I want a downbeat roll longer than one single bar? For that I have the bars slider here. This adds additional bars to downbeat mode, like this. The climax of the roll was now on the downbeat of bar 4 instead of bar 3, with the roll being 6 beats instead of 2 beats long. Now so far I've used these cinematic drums as an example, but the cool thing is that Adaptive Sync is available for any instrument in the library that has this sync label at the end of the name. Let's load up a different one. I'll go into the tonal folder and open the Tutti Orchestra Crescendo instrument. As you can see, I have the same adaptive sync controls here and as with the percussion, everything is done for me. Let's try out downbeat mode and record. Nice. Let's check out another adaptive sync instrument. We'll exit the tonal folder and go into the clusters. And let me open the horn clusters. A little note, if you hear my mouse clicks now and then, I do apologize for that. It's a very clicky mouse. And if I use it while speaking, it's difficult to edit out. Even louder than my mouse though, are these horn clusters. In the middle, in yellow, we have the flutter tongue versions. And on the right, we have soft sustains as a little bonus. And again, we can just change the length of the cluster crescendo right here. like that. I'd like to show you one more adaptive sync instrument before we move on. I've mentioned rises a number of times. Let's check those out. There's three types of string rises in Pandora Core and I'll load up the Arco version. The four regions down here are different dynamic shapes. The last one being the loudest. And for these string rises, we recorded quite a wide range of lengths and Adaptive Sync again makes it super easy to get the length you need from very short to very, very long. There you go. Let's move on to the second main feature of Pandora Core that I would like to cover in this video, sound design mode. With this example, I have loaded the horns diminuendos. Now, all single instruments in Pandora Core have this triangle icon over here. If I click it, I enter what we call sound design mode. Sound design mode is twofold. First, if I now press a key, I get a nice waveform display. Here I can change the start position of each key, like this. I can reverse playback. And I can also adjust the speed of the sample using time stretching. 
These things are especially cool when used with the second part of sound design mode, the real-time effects that are available from the Pandora Core interface. Each instrument has a selection of these effects placed on the main page, such as the stutter effect we saw for the string rises, and all of them have these two toggles here for quickly pitching down the audio, like this. It's a very simple trick, but quite effective. What I'll do now is go into the expanded view of the effects module, where I have access to all of the available effects, and I'll play around a bit. Let's turn up the convolution reverb and the limiter. Now let's enable the pitch envelope and set the range to a number of semitones, something like this. And add some delay. Very nice. Maybe a bit of stutter acceleration as well. Has a bit of a Blade Runner vibe to it, don't you think? Sound design mode adds a lot of value to what is already a large orchestral sample pool. You can really turn the orchestral sounds upside down, and this works especially well for creating nice dark textures and soundscapes, say for a sci-fi or horror. The lucky button is fun too. It resets all of the effect controls to random values, but within certain musical limits, which means the results are actually quite useful. For most of the instruments, we've also created a number of snapshots, which are cool presets using the entire range of effects. I'll show you an example. So this is what this instrument sounds like in its original form. If we now load one of the snapshots available, we get this. Quite a difference. As you can see, the snapshots are available from Contact, but they integrate best with the Complete plugin. Complete also has the added benefit of a quick audio preview when you browse presets. So that's it for this in-depth view of Pandora Core. I hope you enjoyed it. There will be a separate video in which I'll compose a short piece of music using the library, also with voiceover. And if there are specific aspects of Pandora Core that you would like to see in a future video, please let us know in the comments section. See you soon. Bye bye.